All right, thanks for watching and happy palindromic day. Yes, it's a very special day because it can be read the same way if you read it from left to right. So the zero two zero two two zero two zero, but also from right to left. Zero two zero two two zero two zero. And not only that, both Europeans and Americans, they agree on the same thing because here in the American system, you do month, date, year. In the European system, you do date, month, day, month, year. And the question is, um, how many of those days are there? And from now, we'll adopt the American convention because that's where I live. And the interesting thing is, think about how you build it. You first start with the legitimate date, so A, B, C, D, let's say December 31st. And the question is, how do you build the palindrome? Well, you just reverse this, D, C, B, A. So one, two, three, one becomes one, three, two, one, which you can read from left to right and right to left. And of course, I'm sure you're thinking, what about the, um, what's it called, leap year? Well, let's see. That would become February 29th, and you reverse this, 9220. And the nice thing is, this year is a leap year. It's divisible by four, and you don't have to worry about 100 years or 400 years. So, in fact, the answer to how many palindrome days there are, well, Turns out there are 366. Because for every valid day, you have a corresponding uh, palindrome day. And not only that, when is the next one? So let's just try to guess. So for 2020, we had February 2nd, 2020. Well, for 2021, Well, that should correspond to uh, one, two, zero, two. So watch out, December 2nd of next year, we have the next palindromic date, at least in the US, okay? For Europe, it might be slightly different. Okay, so not only that, well, this is kind of cool year, right? Palindromic date and stuff. Um, well, how about other cool mathematical years? Well, let me list a couple of them that I found on a website. So, first one was palindrome. The second one, it's a prime year. So, if you think prime numbers, they're um, numbers that are just divisible by one and themselves other than one. So, prime numbers would be two, three, 5, 7, 11, 13. So 7, 11, and 13 was a prime year. And I think Amazon Prime got very excited about that. But the next one, I think, was 11, 13, 17. But unfortunately, that was the only prime year in the century because the next one would be 13, uh, one, one, yeah, 13, 17, 19. Never mind. So we had also, oh no. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is not a valid date. There's no 13th month. So this doesn't work. So unfortunately, we're done with that century. However, there are other kind of cool years. And actually, speaking of which, so that was a prime where there was also there other, other numbers even better than primes which are Mersenne numbers, so which are form two to the P minus one, where P is a prime number. Not every number is a Mersenne prime, but some Mersenne primes are in fact prime numbers. So if you do P equals three, that gives you two to the third minus one, which is seven. Again, it doesn't guarantee that you get a prime number, but lots of prime numbers are of this form. So, for instance, seven, you start with Mersenne, and then you look at the other prime numbers, let's say 11 and 13. That one was an extra special year because it was a Mersenne prime year. 
And that's also very important if you do cryptography. So lots of secret codes are based on those uh, Mersenne prime numbers. All right, and the next one, if you like bunnies, that's a very nice sequence too, namely the Fibonacci sequence, which starts with zero and then one, and the next term is just the sum of the previous ones. So one and then one plus one, which is two, two plus one, which is three, five, eight, 13, 21, etc., etc. So for instance, five, eight, 13 was a Fibonacci date. But now the next one is coming up next year. 8, 13, 21 is a Fibonacci date. And unfortunately that's all of them because then the 13th month does not exist yet. Maybe in a couple of centuries or something. Okay. And in also more generally, what you can do is just take a random year, random, sorry, month, random day, and then just add them up. So for instance, 11 uh, of uh, 12, so November 12th, well, the sum date would be 23. And the question is, how many of those are there? Well, you just need to specify the month and the date Day, and then you just sum them up. So I believe there are uh, 365 such possibilities because the only exception would be February 29th and that would be 31, which is not a leap year, unfortunately. And then there are two other very exotic ones that I didn't know before, but it, they're actually pretty useful at least mathematically, the next one is what's called the Rekamans sequence. He's the man, the Rekaman. And how does it work? So it's very interesting. You start with zero. So A0 is zero. And then the next term is defined as follows. An, either it's the previous term minus N, if this is positive, or if it's positive and not already in the sequence. So we really want a sequence of different digits, or a n minus one plus n elsewhere else. So let's see how we can construct this. So we have a zero, let's see a one. What this means is, you get take the previous thing, zero, and you subtract one, which gives you minus one, which is negative. So you don't subtract one, you add one to zero, and you get one. How about the next one? So a two, one minus two, which is negative. So one plus two, which is three. Now, a three. 3 minus 3, which is 0, which is not only not positive, but already in that sequence, so 6. And then you do a4. 6 minus 4, which is positive, so we accept it. Then a5, 2 minus 5 is minus 3, which we reject, so 2 plus 5, which is 7, and so on and so forth. And I think you have 13 and then 20 and so on. 20 and in fact, the reason I stop at 20 is because we have a recommends date coming soon, which is July 13th, 2020. Okay. Almost there before, uh, well, I want to say before a Bastille Day, but that would be the European calendar system, which is a bit different. And, okay, that's a very neat sequence. Why is it useful? Apparently, I found out it's useful in music. So if you play strings or music according to the, that sequence, it actually gives you a very beautiful a tone, which is surprising, right? So. 
other words, math, kind of appears in the harmony of nature. Uh, in fact, if I remember, I will put a link to the original article that tells you what this uh, tone is. And I was very surprised. I didn't know. Uh, it's kind of sad. It's kind of where math plays better music than I do, but still. Last but not least, the one that really surprised me, it's what's called the see it and say it sequence. Let's see how to do this. Took me a while to get it, okay? So that's a bit hard to see. But you start with one. And you literally write down what you're saying. How many ones are there? Well, there's one, one. You know, one occurrence of one. So one, one. Next, how many ones are there? Well, there are two ones. So it's 2, 1, which, by the way, gives you the next see it and say it date, and I believe the only one, which is January 11, 2021. Now, what is the next one? You see 1, 2, and then 1, 1. 1, 2, 1, 1. And then the next one, so you see 1, 1, 1, 2, and then 2, 1, and so on and so forth. And this has been studied a lot by John Conway. And apparently he says there's some pattern going on where there are some building blocks, kind of like building bricks, a house from bricks, such that with those building blocks, you can just represent all those numbers, which it's kind of neat. I, I would not have guessed a pattern from this, but. It's still cool, but I think you have to go up to the 93rd one or something to figure out the exact pattern. All right, so I hope this got you excited about dates. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.